In early 2020 I looked back at the last year and I came up with an idea where I wanted to go from there. I imagined making more small documentary-like videos, but soon it grew on me that I could do something bigger. But seriously, how? I recorded on Dovofjell for just seven days. I will just be hanging out here for my last day. I wanted to try to make a mini documentary out of it, but it was never sure to work out. It did though, and the result is pretty darn alright for seven days. So now in 2020, I see that I have the gear, I have the time, and apparently, I have the ambition. Game for the nuts. Somehow, I always start off something with ambition rather than skill. I actually don't know what the bird is called. Why would I need skill if I don't have a vision, right? Everything else will fall into place along the way. I can learn it. So seven days on Dovofjell. What can I do with one year or more? Just imagine what you could do. This is day two of the hunt for the Pine Martin. This might be day five or six. So if we have the means to do it, where do we start? My approach was to scan the local area. Why? I want it to be about the forest here in southern Norway. In detail. Another reason comes to mind, which is to minimize my impact. We want to show how precious nature is, so it is a good thing to lower the impacts of our routines, because that is what we do most of the time. So right now I'm trying to estimate how good I can shoot from this position, for example, and get the riverbed how I want it to. The next thing I have to admit is that I am kind of an all-over-the-place photographer, I would consider myself a rookie in a lot of ways. So now I kind of built this up really easy and if I come back the next time with my camouflage uh, blanket. If you would have asked me two years ago, I would have said I'm a real amateur for sure. A year ago, landscape or nature photography at best? But seriously, compared to me, there are a bunch of nature magicians out there that I can't keep up with. <laughs> it's not it's not big but it's it's really nice inside here. The same goes for wildlife photography. How long am I actually really doing this? It's just about waiting. Maybe with more ambition since last year. Everything before was raw opportunism. Clean this out a bit. If an animal was there, I shot a photo of it. But now something is happening, but I still, I think I'm gonna eat. Now it is different, but I'm not here to photograph. I want to film. Still, to do so, you need to know the animals around. I got knowledge from my biology studies. Good, but how much will the lab help me out here in the wild? And the same goes for the Pine Martin. Not as closely related to the dog, but opportunist. So we start looking for places that look suspicious. Animal tracks, droppings, and set up my wildlife cameras. I go out nearly every day in spring and scan every local forest corner and cross off location after location. Hang my cameras in front of every cave that I can find. How much did I find? Quite something. How much of it is usable? And I stumbled upon a moose corpse. Not that much. Getting animals on wildlife cameras is not the hardest part. Even though it is nice to have your eyes out there 24-7. The number of moose sightings, Pine Martin, in this forest has just doubled. You have to find places that are enough off the track. Still easy accessible to get in and that have a decent amount of light coming from all directions for most of the day. This is where it gets hard, since the southern forest of Norway is a damn mess. What you see in front of the coast is beautiful, 
hundreds and thousands of small islands and rocks sticking up from the water. The problem is, this site continues inland for some 10-20 kilometers, exactly there where I am. Forests are an up and down, from swamps to cliffs in a matter of meters. Not too easy to find your way and find good lighting spots for a German flatlander. I am up for a challenge here anyway, and maybe it is just gonna take some years, but wildlife photography always pays off. <laughs> just look at the guy. One day or yeah. another. <laughs> so here's some advice from my half year experience. You probably know more than me and I'm glad for your input. I have the ambition, not enough knowledge yet. First, have a plan. Plan seasons, plants, flowers and animals that you want to film. So that you don't miss out the bloom of different flowers that are either a great story or a nice b-roll. Second, off the track is better than frequency. So my friend, the Pine Martin, came back. I have it from another perspective. Of course, some animals live really close to us, like the badger. But sometimes that still does not mean you are going to see them in decent light. I was looking for the Pine Martin too close to people. So our friend was here at least. I waited for longer days. In the last couple of weeks, I've been actively on the hunt for the Pine Martin in the forest around my home. But when the time came, the Martin did not. Good morning and maybe welcome to the last part of the hunt for the Pine Martin at this location. I haven't seen it too often lately. Three, a bit repetitive, but have a plan B. You should expect too much, but I expect a lot to be honest. Wildlife will not always show up after plan. If you have some more things on your list, you can just go film something else to not come home after days chasing one animal with nothing. No files existing. <laughs> so much for expectations. Nature documentaries need a lot of landscape shots to fill up the blanks. See, I didn't learn that much. Maybe it's gonna be a few or more than two weeks of exciting days. I hope you have some patience, because this project will take long. Until then, I wish you a good time and luck with your photography. Don't forget to like, sub or leave me a comment. See you soon on another video. Bye. I tried the card again and now I have at least 51 files. <laughs> so much about that.